Decision trees are a supervised learning model used for both classification and regression. Trees answer sequential questions which send us down a certain route of the tree. The model behaves with if this then that conditions, leading us to a final prediction. We can see here an example of a decision tree. It seeks to predict whether I will go to the gym or stay home. The algorithm begins with the first question, known as the root node. In this case, the question is, did I go to the gym yesterday? There are only two possible answers to this question yes or no. The answer to that question dictates the route we take and thus what the next question will be. If I did not go to the gym yesterday, the algorithm will then ask if I will be leaving work late. If I did go to the gym yesterday, the algorithm will ask are my muscles sore? Let's assume I did not go to the gym yesterday. This means the answer to the root nodes question is no and I will follow that route to the next question which is will I leave work late? If no, the algorithm predicts I will go to the gym. If yes, the algorithm predicts I will stay home. Decision trees are a rather simple concept. One of their biggest problems, however, is they are prone to overfitting. This means it is likely the predictions will be too closely linked to the data we have and will not predict effectively on new data. A major step to avoiding this issue is instead using a random forest. Random forests are simply a collection of decision trees. Each tree makes its own prediction, and those predictions are then aggregated into a final prediction, either by votes for classification problems or as an average for regression problems. So in this classification problem, if two trees predict I will go to the gym and one tree predicts I will stay home, majority rules. This means the random forest will predict I will go to the gym because it received more votes. As you may realize, if all of the decision trees are the same, then each tree will predict the same output. This is where the random part of random forests come into play. There are two aspects of randomness involved. The first is with features. In each decision tree, a random subset of features is chosen. In this example, I have seven features. They are, did I go to the gym yesterday? Did I stay up late last night? Will I leave work late? Are my muscles sore? Did I wake up early? Did I eat an unhealthy lunch? Is it a weekday? When I say we will use a subset of features, I am essentially saying each decision tree will only use a few of the total questions. In this tree, you can see only two features were included. The first being, will I leave work late? And the second, did I eat an unhealthy lunch? The second aspect of randomness is using only a sample of the training data each time a tree is fit. Consider this tiny data set of only seven rows. I chose to randomly sample four rows to build my first decision tree. Rows 1, 3, 4, and 7 are chosen in the sample, while rows 2, 5, and 6 are not. This means the first tree will be fit using only the four sampled rows. Now I sample again to build a second tree. This time, rows 2, 3, 5, and 6 are chosen. Again, I only fit the tree using these sampled rows. The idea is to have each row and each feature utilized in at least one of the decision trees. However, not to use all of the rows or all of the features in any single decision tree. This allows us to build trees that are not correlated, which will add variation to our collection of models and reduce the risk of overfitting. Even with this approach, however, overfitting is still a concern. This leads me to the concept of setting a max depth, another tactic used to avoid overfitting. The depth of a tree is the number of questions asked before a prediction is made. The tree's depth is specified by its longest route, in this example, the route to the right has a depth of 1, and the route to the left has a depth of 2. Because the tree's depth is specified by its longest route, we would say this tree has a depth of 2. The reason very deep trees are prone to overfitting is because with each question, we become more and more specific. This increased specificity means we have fewer and fewer training examples that meet the previous assumptions. Let me show you what I mean through an example. Suppose we want to predict if the Boston Celtics will beat the LA Lakers. We have the following features. Is the Celtics win percentage higher than the Lakers? Are the Celtics playing at home? Are all of the Celtics starting players healthy? Are all of the Lakers starting players healthy? Were the Celtics off yesterday? Were the Lakers off yesterday? Is it fan appreciation night? Are the Celtics playing in their home time zone? Are the Lakers playing in their home time zone? Why might we not want to ask all of these questions in one decision tree? While all of these questions may have legitimate predictive power as you look at past data, there will be very few observations, if any, that meet these assumptions. What I mean is, if the Celtics do have a higher win percentage, and they are playing at home, and not all of their starting players are healthy, 
but all of the Lakers' starting players are healthy. And the Celtics were off yesterday, but the Lakers were not off yesterday. And it is fan appreciation night, and the Celtics are playing in their home time zone, but the Lakers are not playing in their home time zone. How many past observations would meet this criteria? We may have a data set that starts with 10,000 rows, but when we look at the rows that meet the previous assumptions I listed, we only have two rows left that are applicable. For this reason, we are susceptible to overfitting, and is why we may limit the depth of our trees. Nonetheless, random forests are a widely used and very effective algorithm. They work well on large data sets, can model nonlinear patterns, and can perform multinomial classification, meaning they can handle problems where there are more than two classes. Hopefully you now not only understand what random forests are, but how they work and why they are effective.